Ever wondered what makes a tennis ball fit for a grand slam? It's not just about the bounce, it's about precision, down to the last gram. Every ball follows a meticulous 24-step process, ensuring it meets strict tournament standards. But did you know that Wimbledon and US Open balls aren't the same? Their unique designs can actually influence the game, and with over 54,000 balls used in a single Grand Slam tournament, every detail matters. Let's dive into the fascinating world of tennis ball manufacturing. The journey of a tennis ball begins in Thailand, where most of the world's tennis ball rubber originates. This isn't ordinary rubber, though. It's a special blend designed specifically for the unique demands of tennis. Let's peek inside the factory, where this rubber revolution unfolds. The process starts by mixing the rubber with up to 10 different substances to create the perfect blend. Each additive serves a specific purpose. Some improve durability. Others enhance bounce, while a few ensure consistent performance across different temperatures and humidity levels. It's like crafting a secret recipe, but instead of flavor, we're after the perfect bounce. Surprisingly, this mixture is then passed through rollers to make it harder and less bouncy. There's a method to this madness. By reducing the initial bounciness, manufacturers can fine-tune the final product to meet strict international standards. It's all about control and consistency. The rubber compound is formed into small pellets, the building blocks of every tennis ball. Each one holds the potential to become part of a Grand Slam winning shot. Imagine holding a handful of these pellets, knowing they would end up in the hands of tennis legends like Serena Williams or Roger Federer. Here's how these pellets transform into tennis balls. 1. Heating The pellets are heated to a scorching 155 degrees Celsius, hotter than boiling water. 2. Pressing the heated pellets are pressed with 160 kilograms of pressure per square centimeter, forming perfect half spheres. This force is like stacking 100 textbooks on an area smaller than a postage stamp. 3. Joining The half spheres are joined through vulcanization, a process akin to a high-stakes chemistry experiment bonding two separate worlds. 4. Air injection Pressurized air is added just before joining, giving tennis balls their bounce. 5. Texturing The ball core spins in a sandpaper-lined drum, creating a textured surface for better felt adhesion. The amount of air added is precisely controlled to meet specific tournament requirements. The air pressure inside a tennis ball can affect how it plays on different surfaces, which is why Wimbledon balls differ slightly from US Open balls. By this stage, we've got the rubber core of a tennis ball, but we're only halfway there. The next phase will transform these bare rubber spheres into the iconic yellow-green balls we all recognize. The factory floor is a hive of activity, with specialized machines handling each delicate step with precision. It's fascinating to think that these little rubber spheres, formed under immense heat and pressure, could end up making history on center court. The journey from raw rubber to finished product is a testament to the intricate engineering behind this seemingly simple piece of sports equipment. Each bounce, each serve, each rally is the result of this complex manufacturing process, fine-tuned to perfection. Now let's dive into the fascinating world of tennis ball coverings. The fuzzy exterior isn't just for show, it's a carefully engineered component that affects the ball's flight and bounce. Let's take you inside the part of the factory where this special fabric is made. The felt used for tennis balls is a unique blend of wool and nylon. Each material plays a crucial role in the ball's performance. Wool gives the ball its ability to return to its original shape after impact, while nylon adds durability to withstand the constant pounding on the court. Here's how it works. The felt is cut into shapes called dog bones. These specially designed pieces are carefully shaped to wrap around the spherical core without bunching or leaving gaps. Each ball is wrapped in two of these dog bone pieces, creating a seamless fuzzy exterior. Applying the felt to the core is a delicate operation. Some factories do this by hand for greater accuracy, while others use sophisticated machines. Either way, precision is key to ensure a smooth, even coverage. Once the felt is in place, the balls undergo vulcanization, bonding the felt securely to the rubber core. 
Next, the balls take a trip to the fluffer. This machine roughens up the felt to give the ball its distinctive fuzzy texture. This step is crucial because the fuzz affects how the ball moves through the air and interacts with the court surface. The fuzzy exterior serves several important functions. It helps control the ball's speed through the air by creating a thin layer of air around the ball, reducing air resistance. This allows for faster serves and shots. It also affects the ball's interaction with the court surface, gripping slightly on bounce and influencing trajectory and spin. You'd be amazed to learn that even the color of the felt is carefully chosen. The bright yellow-green shade, often called optic yellow, was adopted in the 1970s after research showed it was the most visible color to television viewers. Before that, tennis balls were typically white or black. The thickness and density of the felt are also carefully controlled. Too thick and the ball becomes heavy and slow. Too thin and it won't last through a match. The felt's characteristics can even be tweaked to suit different playing surfaces. For example, balls used at Wimbledon have a slightly thicker felt to help them withstand the grass courts. By the end of this process, we've got a fully formed tennis ball, but there's still more to come in the journey from factory to Grand Slam. The balls still need to pass vigorous quality control checks to ensure they meet the exacting standards set by tennis governing bodies. Think all tennis balls are created equal? Prepare to be amazed. Each Grand Slam tournament uses balls tailored to its specific court surface, created through a fascinating process of customization and quality control. Let's take you inside this exclusive world of tennis ball engineering. When it comes to Grand Slam tournaments, every detail matters, right down to the tennis balls. Each of the four major tournaments has its own unique specifications for the balls used on their courts. The pristine grass of Wimbledon demands a ball with softer felt, helping it grip the slick surface for those jaw-dropping slides and precise shots. At Roland Garros, the French Open balls are designed with thicker felt to withstand the abrasive clay courts. Over at the US Open, the balls face the challenge of unforgiving hard courts, so they're crafted with a thicker core to handle intense impacts. But before these specialized balls can make it to center court, they have to pass a series of rigorous tests. Size, weight, and bounce height are all carefully measured to ensure each ball meets exacting standards. Balls are dropped from a height of 254 centimeters and must bounce between 135 to 147 centimeters to pass. This measurement ensures consistent performance during play, from the first serve to the final point of a grueling five-setter. Believe it or not, professional players can often tell the difference between balls just by the sound they make when hit. This sensitivity to the slightest variations is why the precise tailoring of tennis balls is so crucial for top-level play. The testing process for Grand Slam balls is meticulous. Only the balls that meet exact specifications make it to the tournaments. This attention to detail ensures that every serve, volley, and rally in professional tennis is played with a perfect ball. It's a testament to the blend of science and craftsmanship that goes into creating these seemingly simple objects. Next time you watch a Grand Slam match, take a moment to appreciate the humble tennis ball. Behind its fuzzy exterior lies a world of precise engineering, rigorous testing, and careful customization. From Wimbledon's grass to Roland Garros's clay and the US Open's hard courts, each ball is a tiny marvel of sports technology, designed to bring out the best in the world's top players. From the first crush of rubber to the final bounce on the court, the journey of a tennis ball showcases precision engineering and modern manufacturing marvels. Have you ever imagined the hidden craftsmanship in every serve? These humble yellow orbs are the unsung heroes of tennis, keeping the game we love in constant motion. They're a fusion of natural elements and cutting-edge technology designed to perform under the most demanding conditions. Next time you're watching a Grand Slam match, remember the meticulous process behind each ball. When you hear that satisfying thwack of ball on racket, appreciate the incredible journey that brought it to the court, a true testament to human ingenuity. What surprised you the most about how tennis balls are made? Do you think different ball types truly impact a player's performance? Do let me know in the comments.